The American Bank Center is the site for the Southland Conference men's basketball matchup. Seating is up for grabs on the last day of February. The Sam Houston State Bearcats and the Texas A&M Corpus Christi Islanders next from right here in the Coastal Bend. Welcome inside the American Bank Center here in the sparkling city by the bay as Texas A&M Corpus Christi hosts the hottest team in the Southland Conference, Sam Houston State. Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Jeff Power, courtside here. What a matchup we have for you. In fact, when you look at Sam Houston State, they are 13 and one, tied for first with Stephen F. Austin. They've won eight in a row, trying to make it nine in a row. They are definitely the team everyone's talking about in the Southland Conference along with SFA. But hey, you know what? The Islanders of Texas A&M Corpus Christi actually beat SFA earlier this year. Yep. They are 10 and five, seeking their fourth straight win at home. They've been on fire lately. They're still trying to get a top seed. Let's hear from both head coaches. Every game we've played uh, during my tenure here against Sam Houston State, has been, they've been exciting games, they've been great games. Unfortunately for us, we've come up a little bit short, but it seems like every game's been decided by four to six points. We've got to be really solid and be really ready. Baseline out of bounds situations, defensive transition situations, setting our defense, being opportunistic on the offensive end, making sure that we're flowing from fast break situations in the half court where they don't get a chance to, to build their defense. Numbers wise, I believe if we could win tonight, then it probably makes us a one or two seed automatically. So that's a big thing for our guys because last year, you know, finishing third, having to play three games in three days, it was really tough. You know, our guys are still on a mission to try to win a conference championship. And in order to do that, you got to take them one at a time. Willis Wilson, Jason Hooten, they're all ready. Paul Perez with a half court shot. That's the way you do it. Let's now send it to court side where Tom Franklin and Neil Raphael have the call. Thank you very much, Jeff. I'm Tom Franklin. This is Neil Raphael. That half-court bomb by Perez, is that a sign of things to come tonight? Are we in store for the upset by the Islanders? Only time will tell. Meanwhile, Sam Houston State comes in. Winners is 17 of their last 18 ball games, Neil, and they got a great dynamic duo combination in the backcourt, DeMarcus Gatlin and Kahi Branson. Yeah, DeMarcus Gatlin, who's been on ice for over a year with a major knee injury, has come back with a vengeance and is the leading scorer for the Cats. Meanwhile, Ransom can do it at both ends of the floor, scoring where he's led them six of their last eight games and on defense. Yeah, he's had 19 points the last time these two teams met, and he has the tall task tonight of trying to lock down super guard John Jordan. For the Islanders, they have an inside-outside combination. John Jordan, as you mentioned, the senior, the lone senior playing on this year's ball club, and he does it all for them. He does. He's the program's leading scorer, also leads in steals, free throws, assists, you name it, he leads. Helping them out on the inside, a nice soft more post player in Rashawn Thomas. Yeah, Rashawn Thomas, a 6'8 post player, has done it all so far this year, averaging 16 points on the season and 8.9 rebounds, second in the Southland Conference so far this year. Stage is set for a dynamic matchup tonight between the Sam Houston State Bearcats and the Texas A&M Corpus Christi Islanders. We'll be back with the starting lineups for tonight's game right after this. And you're back here at the American Bank Center in Corpus Christi, Texas. Sam Houston State against Texas A&M Corpus Christi, our bill of fare tonight. It's time now for our Stripes starting lineup. Stripes, home of the Laredo Taco Company. And for Sam Houston State, you see a four-guard lineup with the one big man in front, and that is Michael Holyfield. Big 6'10 guy with a large wingspan that can really get things done, but this is a very balanced attack. They have eight players averaging between 8 and 11 points per ball game, very unselfish team. You never know from one night to the next who the big player is going to be for the Bearcats, Neil. Yeah, on paper, this looks like a Donnybrook. Now for the homestanding Texas A&M Corpus Christi Islanders, we take a look at their lineup, uh, a little more conventional three-guard offense with two men up front, Rashawn Thomas, the big tough man on the inside, John Jordan, the guard. The question for them is night in night, who's gonna be the third guy to help them out? We're going to see tonight. Uh, they have several options here. We'll see what happens. They played a strong game earlier this week against Abilene Christian. We'll see who emerges tonight. Our referees for tonight's ball game. Kelly Hunt is our lead official. He'll be assisted by George E. Washington and Travis Motel. 
The Bearcats from Sam Houston State, the visiting team, dressed in their orange jerseys with the white numbers, and uh, Sam H and uh, Texas A&M Corpus Christi, the home team tonight, in the white, trimmed in blue and green. Fans pulling in here on homecoming night, and you just kind of wonder if this wouldn't put them over the top. You know, this is a team that's 5-1 in conference play at home. They've got the big win over Stephen F. Austin, the only team to defeat SFA. It would really be a feather in the Islanders' cap if they can knock off the Bearcats headed for the tournament coming up in a couple of weeks in Katy. Yeah, it would, it would give them momentum going into that conference tournament. So we'll see what happens tonight. A very energetic crowd so far. Stepping out toward the center circle, you see Michael Holyfield for Sam Houston State and Rashawn Thomas. That'll be a matchup to watch as we go along in tonight's ball game. Sam Houston State in the orange will move left to right as we get ready for action here at the American Bank Center in Corpus Christi, Texas. Thank you for joining us here on Root Sports Southwest. Holyfield controlled the tap, but Duvier almost stole it in the backcourt for Texas A&M Corpus Christi, but it'll be brought up the floor by Kahim Ransom. And you'll see a very patient style for the Bearcats. They look down low for Gatlin. Ball knocked out of his hands. Almost a steal. We're going to get a foul. No. They say that Jordan stepped on the end line. No contact, causing him to go out of bounds from Holyfield. Almost a turnover for the Islanders. Yeah, great double down defensively to force that. Thomas coming over for the double off the weak side. And now the question is, is do we reset the shot clock or not? Uh, it looks as though they're going to, they want to, the, the discussion is, is was their possession obtained by Texas A&M Corpus Christi? If there was, the shot clock will go to 35, but if John Jordan, when he got control of the ball, was out of bounds, the clock was not reset. Right now, they've got it back down to 17 seconds, which would make sense because we played 18. As we have a moment, let's take a look at the conference standings that are brought to you by Texas Roadhouse. What's at stake in tonight's game? Well, we've got a table for you at Texas Roadhouse. Stephen F. Austin on top, sharing the lead with Sam Houston State. They're vying for position what could be a showdown game next Saturday in Nagadoches as, Sam as Stephen F. Austin will play the host there. Texas A&M Corpus Christi still with an outside shot of moving into one of those top seeds along the way as they've played one more game as you see with their 10 and 5 record. So positioning at the top and how many buys you get in the conference tournament is definitely what's at stake in tonight's ball game. Yeah, the top two teams get a double buy in the conference tournament. A huge, a huge advantage for the tournament down in Katy, Texas. So they determined that the ball was not totally out of bounds. We got 24 on the shot clock, and Sam Houston maintains possession with Paul Baxter running the offense. Man-to-man -man defense for Corpus Christi. Gatlin's drive, a strong drive from the left side. Got the first two points of the ball game for the Bearcats. Now we get to see the Islanders go on the attack for the first time, and it'll be interesting to see how many different players will wind up guarding John Jordan in tonight's ball game. You're going to see a rotating defense. It'll start with Kahim Ransom, as you see right now. Took a lot of time before they really got into their offense. And now Thomas tries to make something happen. Ball stripped out of his hands. Pump fake. It'll be Brandon Pye with the jumper from the circle. Rolled out. Rebound put back, no good by Thomas. Tipped around again. Thomas again through the double team. Couldn't get it to go. And finally, Holyfield will clear for the Bearcats. Stolen by Duvier. Jordan back out on the wing for Pye, and they'll settle it down. Duvier goes in. Ball stripped out of his hands and a foul. And a nice start on the offensive glass for the Islanders. Sam Houston State does a great job and is at the top of the conference in team rebound. See, we can take a look at the replay here. Duvier's got a bit of a size advantage against Gatlin and this four guard offensive setup that Sam Houston State goes with. And it might be a thing that Willis Wilson and the Islanders can exploit tonight. Duvier knocks home the first free throw. 
I like the aggressiveness so far by the Islanders, especially on the offensive glass. He's an 83% free throw shooter on the season. And ties the ball game at 2-2. Both teams will play, well, you see the Islanders setting up in a 1-2-2, three-quarter court zone trap. Bearcats break it. Peters misses the three ball and Duvier will clear. Jordan trying to get something going in transition and Thomas guilty of the travel. Had the opportunity there with the one and done on the three point shot to get something in transition yeah. but turned it right back over. Something that Willis Wilson and company can ill afford to have happen tonight. Yeah, Holyfield stepped out, put the pressure on and forced a turnover. Attacking from the outside, and oh no, they're going to wave that one off because Baxter got his hand on the netting while the ball was still on the rim, so wipe out the basket on the drive. Let's see if we can take a look at it again. Here comes Baxter. He drives in, and then there you see the hand coming in from the outside. Yeah, and check nice this. drive nullified by that offensive goal 10. Rashawn Thomas with an air ball from 18 feet and back the other way come the Bearcats. Driving in the lane, stumbling and falling was Ransom. They go down low for Holyfield and he's fouled by Thomas who thought he had a clean block. Yeah, Baxter to Holyfield there and Holyfield did a nice job of squaring up, stepping to the basket and getting to the line. Keep an eye on that. Rashawn Thomas has been bothered in the last half dozen games by some early foul trouble. You see Gatlin stumbling on the drive that initially started this thing. And that time down, Tom, Sam Houston was really pushing the ball. They didn't want to get caught up in the 1-2-2 two, two trap set up last time. One out of two for Holyfield. Makes it a 3-2 ball game in favor of the Bearcats. Jordan pressured up the floor by Ransom, keeps his dribble alive on the sideline. And we get a whistle. Jason Hooten came off the bench and got in the ear of one of the officials. And we have an injured player here. We got a cut. Yeah, I think we got some blood coming from Paul Baxter. Somewhere in the mayhem, and they're going to training staff will have to attend to him. It'll cause for the first substitution off the bench. It'll be the sophomore from Pearland Dawson High School, and that is Dakari Henderson. Henderson, a very big offensive threat, but can be a defensive liability. So at 25 on the clock, the Islanders go back to work on offense. Feed inside for Thomas against Holyfield. Holyfield takes the ball away. Great hands by Holyfield. That time Thomas tried to take him off the dribble. Holyfield would have none of it. Now let's see if the Bearcats can capitalize. Three minutes gone by here in the first half. Duvier slapped the ball away from Gatlin but couldn't get it. And both teams so far defensively in the guard position are above the arc and really extending the defense out and not allowing any three-point attempts or any shot from distance. Holyfield with what he thought was a lane to the basket got too anxious and took a shuffle step before putting the ball on the ground. And so that's a turnover against Sam Houston State. So both teams, you can tell the, the the adrenaline's really flowing in these teams. It'll take a little bit for things to settle down, but right now there's another travel by Duvier. But right now you can see that uh, teams are a little bit amped up for tonight's ball game, and it's causing a little bit of a sloppy start to our ball game. Here's Duvier with the third step before he ever got there. Yeah, Coach uh, Coach Wilson didn't like the contact by by Gatlin that time. Ransom dribbling through, got himself into trouble, and Duvier comes away with the ball ahead for Jordan. Here come the Islanders. Jordan down low back to Duvier for the three. He's got it. Bryce Duvier with all five of the Islanders' points, and they lead 5-3. And you see the Islanders slapping the floor. They're going for what they call a kill, and that is three straight possessions 
without points scored by the opposition. Peters swings the ball around. It goes far side. This is Henderson. Got it down low for Gatlin with the right hand. Missed everything. He got his own rebound and missed the follow and got fouled. A huge offensive rebound that time by Gatlin. Foul is on Duvier. His first brings us to an official's timeout. 15.34 to go here in the first half from Corpus Christi. The Islanders on top by a score of 5-3 to three on Root Sports Southwest. See who's better on the Schlotsky Southland Conference scoreboard. Right now, it's the Islanders with a 5-3 to three advantage. Schlotsky's where it's lots better. Both teams a little tentative getting underway tonight. One for four for Sam Houston State. One out of five for Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Each team with three turnovers, Neil, in the early going. Yeah, both teams are playing a little bit tight, but a lot of that's due to the aggressive man-to-man -man defense of both squads. As we come back to play DeMarcus Gatlin at the free throw line to shoot a pair for Sam Houston State. Gatlin a 70% free throw shooter. First one is good for the senior out of Bush High School in Houston. And he has three of the four points for the Bearcats so far and can tie it with the second one. Got a substitution coming in, and it'll be Markel McKinney who will check in for Gatlin. Gatlin suffering a serious knee injury, a broken kneecap back in February of 2013, kept him out for a year and a half, but has come back to be the leading scorer at 11 points per game on this very balanced Sam Houston State attack. Duvier knocked down a three the last time. We'll try and get it inside for Thomas. Goes strong with the left hand, no good, but drew the contact and the foul. And it will be on Aramis Myauskas, the sophomore from Lithuania. For Myauskas, his first and the second against the Bearcats. And substitutions coming in for Texas A&M. Corpus Christi between the free throws. And the Islanders have moved high to the point trying to put Jordan on the left wing so he can try to create some offense and some shot opportunities. Thomas misses the first free throw. He's a 64% free throw shooter on the year. And Victor Juracek will come in if Thomas makes the free throw. Now, Duvier, I don't think is bleeding, but I think he's caught some blood. He's got some blood on his uniform. So they got to get take that taken care of. And so a very disjointed start to this ball game between the turnovers between the two teams and a flow and unable to be established. Now we've had an injured player for Sam Houston State go out, and now a Texas A&M Corpus Christi player who wound up with some of the blood on his uniform, have to get that taken care of yeah, before we can get team, back to work. Neither team has been able to get into an offensive rhythm so far, playing a little tentative. And again, due to the aggressive man-to-man -man defense here and starting their offense above the three-point line as opposed to establishing something down low. Got to look at Paul Baxter in the uh, Texas or in the Sam Houston State huddle. He's got a bandage over his eyebrow now, and so that's where the cut came from and the blood that eventually somehow wound up on Duvier's uniform. And both teams are spreading things out offensively, trying to get in the paint, and, and that's something both these teams do very well is getting to the free throw line. So now Thomas with the second half of his two-shot foul. That puts the Islanders back on top, 6-5, to five, and he'll take a seat as Victor Juracek will come in. Juracek, a 6'11 player from Slovakia, who started at the University of South Alabama. Not so much the inside back-to-the-basket post player, more of a guy who can spread that offense and take you outside. You're going to foul away from the ball. 
And it's on Ehab Amin. A much better start for the Islanders this time. They were down 26 to 12 at halftime the first time these two teams met. And boy, much more aggressive and much more patient on offense right now are the Islanders. Here's Dakari Henderson trying to penetrate. Got it inside for Myauskas. They swing it to the outside. The three ball is good by Kahim Ransom. Three point basket gives the Bearcats a two point advantage. With five and a half going by here in the opening half at the American Bank Center in Corpus Christi. Jordan tracked wherever he goes by at least one, if not two, orange shirts. Fired the 15 footer, missed it. Duvier's got the putback though for two. Again, nice work on the offensive glass by the Islanders. And they're not forcing Jordan or check that they're forcing Jordan to go east-west not north-south. But Duvier was seven of the eight points for the Islanders in the early going coming off an 11.9 rebound performance against Abilene Christian back on Tuesday night. Here's Henderson three from the left corner is no good and we get a rebounding foul underneath and it may be on the Islanders. Good job by the Cats of penetrating and kicking. It's a second three-point attempt in the last minute for the Cats. Juracek picks up the foul. Paul Baxter will come back in for the Bearcats. And Javari Peters will take a seat. So a new 35 for the Bearcats as they inbound underneath their own basket. Baxter forced out on the switch by Duvier. They go inside for Myauskas, and Amin picks up his second foul. Trying to go for the steal on the double team. And that could hurt the Islanders because Amin has been a guy who's been able to come off the bench and really provide an offensive spark for them. Yeah, and he had opportunity there just to double the ball as opposed to going for the steal. Amin, a very high energy guy, likes to force the issue, but sometimes will force it a little too far and get a little reckless. But there's a steal by Jordan on the inbounds pass. He'll take it coast to coast and get stripped going up. And that's where he really thrives, Tom, in the open court. They haven't had a whole lot of opportunities fast break wise, and that's where he's good. Transition game is very good for John Jordan, and, and as much as he leads this team in scoring, he almost takes more pride in setting up his teammates with the assist. He's almost prouder of the fact that he averages nearly six assists per ball game. Very unselfish player is John Jordan. He struggled at the free throw line, even though, as we mentioned at the open, he's the all-time leader in free throws made here at Texas A&M Corpus Christi. His percentage has dropped to 66%, but he knocks a pair home here. The Islanders lead by two as they go back to that 1-2-2, two, two, three-quarter court trap. Not too much trouble for the Bearcats to break it, get in the front court. And that's how you have to handle it with two guards up front. Myauskas will step in for the 18-footer miss. Tip in is good underneath. Nice follow by Ransom. Yeah, look at the ups by Ransom. Guy who's 6'1". Look like a tall man up there instead of a 6'1 guy. Jordan trying to create some offensive flow. Juracek will take the three ball. Rims in and out, no good. Tipped up by Duvier. Pies follow is off the mark and taken down by Myauskas for the Bearcats. Neither team's getting a lot of clean look so far. We got a push. Thought for a minute we might have a carry on Baxter. But instead it's a foul on Duvier and that'll be Duvier's second. So the Islanders in the first seven and a half minutes have two players with two early fouls. Bryce Duvier who's got seven points and he have a mean or energy guy off the bench. So Thomas comes back in for Duvier and so they'll go with two big men now as Juracek will move over to the four spot. And Rashawn Thomas comes back in at the five. And Holyfield comes back in. Now that Thomas is back in. 
Islanders do a good job of guarding the baseline inbounds play. That was a play that hurt them in the first matchup as the Bearcats converted on eight of nine baseline out of bounds possessions. Baxter's three from the right side is no good. We get a reach in foul on Holyfield. So Holyfield picks up his first. Four team fouls now against the Bearcats. And six against the Islanders. So from here on out, Sam Houston State's going to be in the bonus situation the rest of the first half. And we've still got 12 minutes and change to play. Jordan can't get by, kicks it out. Thomas's three ball is no good. That's not his shot. Sam Houston State trying to work on transition. Baxter's three is good this time for the right side. Missed a moment ago from that exact same spot. Put a little more depth on it this time and got it to go for a 13 to 10 Sam Houston State lead. Yeah, he got it and got his legs involved that time and shot it over the outstretched arms of a 6'11 Slovakian. Going to reach in foul on Jordan. That'll be the seventh team foul against the Islanders. It will send Sam Houston State to the bit. Free throw line for the bonus situation. A one and one coming up when we return. Sam Houston State riding an eight game winning streak. Off to a 13 to 10 lead over Texas A&M Corpus Christi here on Root Sports Southwest. to Katy, March 11th through 15th at the Merrill Center. Go to Ticketmaster.com or Southland School Ticket Offices. Play track one. By all of us, for all of us, the next Harley Davidson motorcycles. Corpus Christi Harley Davidson. What if all ATMs were free, regardless of what bank logo was on them? That's like half a million ATMs nationwide. No ATM fees with Liberty Checking from Navy Army Community Credit Union. Does your bank do that? What if mobile banking was made easier? No bells, no whistles, just balances, transfers, and inquiries. Simplified mobile banking from Navy Army Community Credit Union. Does your bank do that? Sam Houston State starting to find the shooting touch in the last four minutes. They've gone three of six from the field. Meanwhile, AM Corpus Christi, just two of 11 in the ball game, shooting a frigid 18%, yet they only trail by three here with 11.25 to play first half. Front end of the one and one is good by Dakari Henderson to take the advantage to four points. Henderson's first point of the night. Sophomore is a 70% free throw shooter. And it's got them both. So biggest lead of the ball game for either team. Five points for Sam Houston State of 15 to 10. As we're under 11 and a half to play here in the opening half at the American Bank Center in Corpus Christi. The Cats making Jordan work for everything he gets. And the ball game now is number 11 and that is Jakari Curry. And also in the ball game is number three, Joe Kilgore, who passed it off back to Jordan here with under 10 to shoot. Jordan pulls up for the 12-footer and got the friendly roll off the iron. 
Nice job by John Jordan of breaking down the defense off the bounce, shooting the 12-foot jumper. His first field goal of the night. Pulls the Islanders to within three. They look down low for Holyfield. He's stripped going up. The foul is called on Curry, reaching in to help out. That's now eight team fouls against Texas A&M Corpus Christi. And free throw shooting could come into a play here in the first half. As a team, the Bearcats shoot it better than 71%. Holyfield rattles the first one in and out. He is one of three from the stripe. One of their lesser free throw shooters at 61%. Amin with two fouls. Duvier with two fouls, as you mentioned. Could turn into a free throw shooting contest. Gatlin is checked back in the ball game for the Bearcats. And Henderson sits down. One out of two for Holyfield. He's got two points on two of four from the free throw line. And it's a four point Sam Houston State lead. Thomas and Holyfield watch that matchup. Passes out in the corner, fumbled in the corner by Kilgore. His shot was blocked and taken down. Great closeout that time by Peters. Shuffle the feet does Paul Baxter. Take away a transition opportunity for Sam Houston State. And both teams doing a nice job of defending the pick and roll so far. Nice job of switching or sliding through, but neither team has benefited from it. That relies so much on communication between the players, whether you're going to go around, whether you want to switch, whether you're going to come through like that. Jordan calling the play from back near midcourt, and they're going to wait until they get 10. Gets a high screen from Thomas, clears it out on the wing and threw it away. He was looking for Kilgore, who wasn't standing there. He was standing about three seats away. Unforced error for the Islanders. Get a substitution, and Dubier with his two fouls is going to check back in. He will come in for Victor Juracek. Both teams so far doing a nice job of substitution, trying to keep their players fresh and out of foul trouble. Now let's see what happens. Let's see if Sam Houston State will try to attack Duvier since he is playing with the two fouls and has been their main offensive weapon with seven of their 12 points here in the first half. Gatlin's drive, no good. Rebound fought for and finally pulled out of there by Kilgore. Kilgore at 6'5", going high for that rebound. Jordan with a James Harden type drive trying to use that Euro step <laughs> got fouled on the pass off trying to split the defense there and Gatlin will pick up his second foul and will earn him a spot back on the bench and Jordan's just so quick has that first quick step able to get in the lane and, and create havoc so McKinney will replace Gatlin who sits down We get a moving screen as if that's on Duvier. No, it's on Thomas, but that's Thomas' second. So now both of the big starters that Texas A&M Corpus Christi incorporates, Duvier and Thomas, both have two fouls. And Islander coach Willis Wilson is not at all pleased with the officiating so far in the first 11 minutes of the ball game. No, anytime your your bigs have two fouls early in a contest, it, it really limits what you can do offensively. Forces your hand into the guards. So now the Bearcats, who already lead by four, have nine minutes to try and build on this. The next foul that the Islanders give will mean two shots on every foul for Sam Houston State, where they can take advantage, plus the two big men. Duvier and Thomas both playing with two fouls will have to be somewhat tentative on the inside. And we could have, you know, more fouls than we have right now. It seems like most plays are trying to work off the high pick and roll. Right. You get the post player up and, you know, if he doesn't, there. If he doesn't come set, you get called for the moving exactly. screen. So right now, Thomas and Duvier both are going to stay on the floor. And we'll see how that affects both teams' offenses. Now, will they stay with a man-to-man -man defense? They will. 
Willis Wilson will not go zone. Neither team likes to utilize the zone defense, but when your two big men are in foul trouble, you might think about it. Baxter around Duvier and scoops it in with a right hand. And that creates some issues because neither team has shot a lot of three-pointers so far in this contest. All due to the aggressive man-to-man. -man. There's a drive by Jordan. We're going to get the foul coming in on Markel McKinney, and that'll be McKinney's second. That'll be six now on Sam Houston State. So from here on out, the Islanders will be in the penalty. And we'll get another substitution, Jamal Williams. 6'4", freshman out of Episcopal High School in Houston will check in for the Bearcats. And Brandon Pye will come back in for Joe Kilgore for the Islanders. It'll be Pye who will send the play in motion for the baseline. Feeding down low for Thomas. Up and under move is no good as he got around Holyfield but couldn't get it to roll and the Bearcats come away with the rebound. Thomas did a nice job on that low block of posting up, wrapping around, but just off the edge of the rim. Approaching eight minutes to play in the first half and a, a six-point Bearcat lead. Three ball from the corner is airmailed on the far side by Williams. And back the other way come the Islanders, and Thomas is stripped. They say he just lost the ball out of bounds. I thought he got stripped on that drive. But that'll bring us to an official's timeout. 7.50 to play. And the Bearcats enjoy a six-point advantage here in Corpus Christi. Inside the American Bank Center in Corpus Christi, Texas, Sam Houston State on top of the AM Corpus Christi Islanders, 18 to 12. And at every media timeout that we've had here in the first half, under 16, under 12, and now under 8, Texas AM Corpus Christi has made just one field goal in each of those four minute increments. They are 3 of 14 for 21%, and they've got to start finding the range if they're going to get back in this ballgame. Coach Willis Wilson talking with Travis Motel. And, and one thing, Tom, they're, they're not doing as well as they did in the first few minutes is crashing the offensive glass. That provided opportunities for second chances and some easy baskets. Dale Francis, 34 on the floor now for the Islanders. You see him come out on the double team there. And that left Holyfield alone but underneath, but he got it taken away by Jordan before he could go up. Now, can the Islanders capitalize on the turnover? Jordan's shot is no good, and Holyfield will take down the rebound. Yeah, he had a good look that time. He even had Ransom back on his heels and had the shot, but didn't fall. See, much of the offense for both of these teams take place outside the three-point arc. There's Ransom's three ball. No good. Holyfield's got the rebound, and we get a foul. They're going to call that an offensive foul on Holyfield. Looked like he Holy grabbed field. it with one arm that time, Tom. I was wondering where the other arm was. I think we found it. And Holyfield walks down the floor with a hand on each cheek saying, you called that on me? <laughs> of course, no basketball player has ever committed a foul. <laughs> ever, ever. Another traveling violation called on the Islanders. And they just cannot get underway. And that is their seventh turnover here in the first half. Between not being able to make shots and making seven turnovers, they have not found an offensive rhythm. Well, part of the reason is they really haven't been able to get in transition more than a couple of times and really have had to go five on five against a bigger team. Peters' three ball is no good. Long rebound taken down on the backside by Williams and the second shot is missed. So Sam Houston State cannot take advantage of the second opportunity. Ball comes around, it's Francis from the top of the circle, no good. 
fight for the rebound, and Holyfield is strongest of all. Yeah, great ball movement that time by the Islanders, but not able to put it down. Lid on the basket in the first half. Baxter will take a three. That's no good. Backside rebound for Peters. We get a whistle. Three-second violation called on the Bearcats. Emmanuel Tony will check back in for the Islanders. And Dakari Henderson comes in for the Bearcats. Tony, a great story, a walk-on. Last year, exactly. mostly a practice squad player. Did so much for them and improved in the offseason. He was awarded a scholarship prior to the start of this year. This goes to show you if you if you are dedicated about your craft, good things will come to you at some point in time. There's Jelani Curry, the left-handed three. Or make that a two-point shot, rather, just inside the arc to cut the lead down to four. A much-needed basket for the Islanders. Now let's see if they can play defense and force a stop here. They try to find Holyfield. He recovers down low and gets it to Henderson. His shot is short. Loose ball picked up by the Bearcats, Holyfield. Holyfield had it knocked away and stolen by Pye. He'll get it back in bounds to Tony, and here come the Islanders in transition. They had a transition opportunity, kind of pulled it out, didn't press the issue to the rim that time. Did get real good crisp passing, and I think that may have been part of the idea to pull it back and set the offense up with 440 to go and 13 to shoot. Curry will try to attack, had it stripped away from behind by Peters and recovered by Holyfield. Now Peters will throw it away over the head of Dakari Henderson into the lap of Marty Gross, assistant coach for the Islanders. And Gross with a nice one-handed stab as he holds onto that clipboard. <laughs> And I'll tell you what, if you follow this Islanders team at all, Marty Gross is a master at scouting the opposition and developing game plans, so much so that he all he oftentimes will pick up the play call from the other team. In addition to saying, well, they run this, but when they announce what it is for the coaching staff, he can tell his players what play is coming. Here's a reverse layup for two by Jordan. Look at the littlest guy on the floor flex his muscles. And that's something we talked about, second chance opportunities for the Islanders. Great attempt by Curry, but the smallest man, Jordan, plays huge. Jordan, 5'10", senior out of Hightower High School in Houston, with a chance to pull the Islanders to within one. Sean Goodwin will come in for Aramis Myauskas, who picked up his second foul on that play. Myauskas, the guy who gives him some good offense down in the low post in the mid-range game, will have to sit for the final 4-0-2 as Jordan completes the three-point play. He now has seven points to tie Duvier for team honors. And we saw some of Jordan's verticality that time, probably the best on the team. Strong drive to the basket, couldn't get it to go. Jamal Williams, but does pick up the foul and bring us to immediate timeout with 3.52 to play in the first half. The Islanders have come from six down to pull it to within one at 18.17 here at the American Bank Center. Thanks to the play of their outstanding senior point guard, John Jordan, who now has seven points for the Islanders. Texas A&M Corpus Christi has made this a one-point game at 18-17 to with 3.52 to play here in the opening half. He shares scoring honors in the game with his teammate Brace Duvier with seven apiece, five points each for Kaheem Ransom and Paul Baxter to lead the way for the Sam Houston State Bearcats. A lot of that is due to Sam Houston missing their last six field goals in a row. Jamal Williams makes the first of two free throws here. Williams at 71% on the season. Had nine points and seven rebounds against the Islanders in their first meeting up in Huntsville. And he's two for two from the stripe, this time down the floor. 
So a three-point Sam Houston State lead, and now the Bearcats trying to give the Islanders a taste of their old medicine with a 1-2-2 zone trap. High air mails the three-pointer from the left corner, and the Bearcats come back the other way. Inside, Henderson's pass is stolen by Pye. He gets it ahead to Jordan. Jordan with a crossover and got it to go and a foul as well. A nice little hesitation that time by John Jordan and takes that one to the rim. And Kahim Ransom picks up his first foul. And Jordan with a chance to be the first player into double figures. Watch him as he comes to attack the basket here. He got Ransom to go to his feet, and he just reached out as Jordan was going by and grabbed him on the arm. Jordan cannot complete the three-point play. We get a rebounding foul. I believe it's on Dale Francis. That'll result in free throws at the other end for Sam Houston State. Well, Jordan has the ability to change directions so quick, had the defender moving to his right and able to take it right at the rim, did Jordan. Sean Goodwin, backup post player for the Bearcats, comes in to shoot a pair and misses the first. Jordan averages just two and a half points per game as a 71% free throw shooter. Junior out of Hutchinson, Kansas, and Butler Community College transferring in. Pretty popular place for Division I coaches to go. Hutchinson, Kansas, home of the NJCA. National tournament Junior every college year. tournament every yeah. year, right? Absolutely. Thomas tries to break the press and get a blocking foul on Holyfield underneath. Last time Thomas went in the paint, he was charged with an offensive foul. That time did a nice job of, as we see, kind of moving around. The defender wasn't set and gets to the line for two. But Thomas misses the first. So Thomas from the line, just one out of three. Paul Baxter coming back in the ball game for Holyfield. And now Sam Houston State playing very small as Goodwin is their tallest man on the floor right now. One out of two for two straight trips down the floor for Thomas, who's got those two points the ball game and pulls the Islanders to within one at 21-20. And both teams have been pretty efficient from the free throw line here in the first half. Now they're gonna trap at midcourt, it looks as though. Now they'll drop back into the man-to-man -man as Baxter controls the dribble for the Bearcats. Peters will bring it back out top and go inside for Henderson. His pass out for Peters is stolen. And going coast to coast, Emmanuel Tony with a dunk. And we might get a, a, an intentional foul there, a flagrant foul on the play as Tony took quite a spill underneath the basket. And Tony's back up saying, I got this. I'm all right. My goodness. What anticipation by Tony and an exclamation point on the other end. Boy, did he take that strong to the rack. You see the deflection by Tony, took it away from Peters, ahead of the field, and coming in from the outside to make the foul. The hard foul was Paul Baxter. He went for the basketball. He went across his body. Nonetheless, he was behind him, but he made an attempt to get the ball. From behind, right. I don't, I don't see anything there. Well, the officials are taking a look at the replay down the scores table from us. But the initial call by referee George Washington was a, an intentional call. When you, when you go up with those arms Cross crossed, them. correct. that's a two-shot opportunity. So Tony with his first points of the night in dramatic fashion gives the Islanders the lead back at 22 to 21 with 2.49 to play. Now the only question is, is how many free throws are coming on top of that power dunk to the basket? 
<laughs> Got a little cut on his elbow uh, from the rim, it looks like Tom. <laughs> So while the officials take a look at it, let's, let's see if we can get one more look at it here. You know, you usually get a cut around your wrist. <laughs> but you see Tony, last year's walk-on, now a scholarship player, going all the way to the basket. Well, he got a lot he of got, body as well. He got well. a lot of body. He got he undercut, did. and I think the undercutting yes. with the body is what's going to bring exactly. more than one free throw here. Yeah, second look at it, a lot more body than I saw the first time. And the discussion continues. And it's very interesting because it was George Washington who made the call on the floor, but it's his two other officials, Travis Motel and Kelly Hunt, who are looking at the replay and will decide because Washington has pretty much made up his mind it's a flagrant or intentional foul. It's a flagrant one is the official call. Yeah, flagrant two would eject Baxter. you from the contest, right. but a flagrant one allows you to stay in. And now both teams have 10 team fouls as well. And because it's a flagrant foul, instead of making this a three-point opportunity for Tony, it now becomes a four-point opportunity because he will get two free throws. Tony on the year, 73% from the stripe. He's a defensive standout who is uh, known for steals and is second on the team in that category, and it led to the transition basket and the lead for the Islanders as he makes the first. And the aggressive defense right now by the Islanders is the difference in this contest. Now Tony can open this up to a three-point advantage with 2.49 to play. And he does. Very calm from the line. And because it was a flagrant foul, this could become a six or seven point scoring play for the Islanders because they're going to get the ball back in the offensive end underneath the basket. So a turning point in the game, you want to circle your scorecards on that with 2.49 to play here in the first half. This is exactly what the Islanders needed, get the fans involved and get a nice run here before the half. Now John Jordan runs the point. They go for the backdoor lobby. Almost made the shot from midcourt. Ball loose on the floor. And finally taken away down low by Baxter. My, oh, my. They went for the alley-oop play, and Jordan almost made the basket himself. Baxter's drive to the basket, and the shovel with the right hand is good. Yeah, against the 1-3-1 zone look that time. Makes it a one-point game, 24-23. Islanders with the lead in the ball with 2.15 left here in the first half. Both teams very patient with their offense. If they don't get it in transition, they are not afraid to bring it back out and run clock. Jordan caught in the lane, kicks it back out. Francis is three, it's good. Dale Francis with the three. Yeah, Ransom bit on the double team to help Jordan, and that freed up the wing player for the shot, and he nailed it. 135 to play now. Bearcats need a basket to stem this momentum that the Islanders are on. Almost a steal on the sideline. Ball comes back out top. Williams will throw it over his head out of bounds. Is it just going to be an out of bounds or are we going to get a foul on the play? No, We're going to get an offensive foul on him as well. So not only did he throw it out of bounds, he picked up a foul as well. Got out of control on that drive. Let's take a look. Oh, yeah, there are two players. Curry was there and absorbed the contact. He was there in plenty of time to draw the foul against Jamal Williams. Yeah, great team effort that of sliding up and sliding together and closing the lane. Let's see if the Islanders can execute again in the half court. Yep, looks like an isolation. And we get a foul. 
Coach is calling clear, clear, clear. Means an isolation on one side of the floor. And Ransom will pick up the blocking foul against John Jordan, who will go back to the line to shoot a pair. Because on the isolation, if you don't have good help side defense, you've got a lane to the basket. Jordan's first is good. Jordan now at 10 points. First time in the last four games he's been in double figures. He's been in single digits the last three. But he's the first player to double figures in tonight's game with 10. Short on the second one. Rebound is scrambled for and taken away by Paul Baxter for the Bearcats. So Jordan's free throw woes continue here tonight. So he is three out of five for the strike. Three out top by Dakari Henderson is good, and the Bearcats needed that basket in a big way. Good ball movement by the Cats that time. He is an excellent three-point shooter at 37%, pulls it to within two. Now the Bearcats can pretty much play for the final shot. There's about a second and a half difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Now from a four-down set, they switch. Jordan trying to break it down. He'll take the 18-footer and knock it home. And Jason Hooten. Technical foul called on Jordan. A little bit of extra exuberance on that basket. Will bring him not only the technical foul, but a personal foul as well. And that'll be his second. I like the isolation plays by the Islanders. That time it was from the top. They send everybody else below one-on-one -on -one opportunity, but didn't need the technical foul right near the half. No, you sure did not because no. you got the four-point yeah. lead. You got momentum on your side. You know, it was 18-17 to 17 at the under four-minute timeout, and so the Islanders here are on a 13-8 to, to eight roll. Going into the intermission, you've had the momentum you didn't need to give. Sam Houston stayed an opportunity to score a couple of times here in the final 2.5. So the officials again take a look at the replay monitor. Wondering what the discussion is on this. It's all about, and it may be a timing issue, you know, with the ball going through. In the first half, the clock continues to run, unlike at the end of the ball game, where the clock will stop inside of a minute to play on every dead, on every made basket. It doesn't do it this way, and that's what they reset the clock to three. It, they were trying to figure out exactly when the officials blew Pulled the, the whistle. whistle. Right, six tenths of a second added. So, Duvier, Thomas, and Jordan, the three leading scorers for the Islanders, all will go into the intermission with two fouls because Jordan gets charged not only with a technical, but a personal foul as well. Kaheem Ransom makes the free throw to make it 30 to 27. And now Jason Hooten will call a timeout to draw up a three second play, something they work on at the end of. Their shoot around practice on game day. You work on situations like this, how can we get down the floor, whether it's at the end of the game, in a very quick manner, they run three or four different sets. So it'll be interesting to see which one he pulls out of his bag of tricks that it's, I was watching practice today. A lot of it depends on what the defense is doing, how they're set up. And many times they have an additional timeout and they don't like what they're seeing, they'll come back and reset and reconfigure. Now you're not going to burn an extra timeout. And, and Jason Newton's smart to use it because in the first half, you're supposed to use one timeout. If you don't use it, it gets taken away. You can only carry four into the second half. So with three seconds to play, it makes perfect sense to go ahead and bring your team together, get exactly what you want for this final three seconds. You know, we've seen a lot of great late-minute plays. The Grant Hill pass to Christian Leitner and the Duke. Uh, NCAA game, you remember uh, 
Bryce Drew with Valparaiso in a last second play. The inbounds from midcourt. Baxter's three pointer is no good. And so the Islanders will take a three point advantage into the locker room here at halftime with a 30 to 27 advantage over Sam Houston State. The Islanders have already beaten the top team, Stephen F. Austin. Can they beat the other top team, Sam Houston State? They're 20 minutes away from finding out. Andy Richardson and I'm the principal at Gibson Elementary School. When I wanted to move up in my career, A&M Corpus Christi was there for me. A great career starts with a great education. My professors took a personal interest in my success. Texas A&M Corpus Christi helped me become the leader that I am today. Named a top Texas university for return on investment. Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Discover your island. Visit us for Island Day at islandday.tamucc.edu. That is really great queso. I love it. It's Where's the balsamic vinegar? I'm looking for uh, lingonberry. OK, uh, thank you. Right, this way. I got it. Donde esta? Pepper toppers. Gracias. We searched the world to find our unique HEV Primo picks. Now, we need your help. Name our new Primo pick salsa, and you could win $5,000. GoIslanders.com is your source for Texas A&M Corpus Christi Athletics. From live stats to live video to all the latest news, GoIslanders.com has everything to keep you up to date on all the latest on your favorite Islanders team. On the road, the Islanders Front Row app brings you live stats, video, and news right on your mobile device. Check out Islanders schedules and statistics and learn more about the student athletes at the Island University. Get tickets, Islanders game day gear, and more by clicking your way to GoIslanders.com today. Thirty to twenty-seven, Texas A&M, Corpus Christi leading the Bearcats of Sam Houston State here at your Christmas Bond Health System halftime report. I'm Jeff Power, now joined by Scott Lazenby, the athletic director here at Texas A&M Corpus Christi. And first of all, you guys are ahead. You got to feel pretty good about that. I uh, feel really good. We played a very hard, tough first half. Played some great defense. Missed a few shots. Going into halftime with the lead, we're feeling pretty good. You'll take it. Uh, that's right. We'll take it. <laughs> You're in your fourth year as the athletic director here, and what a great university what you've been able to do especially on the basketball court the last couple of years on both the women's and men's side let's start with the men oh uh, you know willis wilson the hire we made four years ago was a home run he's done a great job he took over a program that was in the bottom of the dumps really but he has brought it up we're now we're one of the top teams in the league we're very excited about that the young men he's brought into the program is some young men we've really been proud of really good young high character kids and just really happy to have him here. The women got a victory earlier today, 60 to 52. We'll show you that in just a little bit. But uh, that was a great win for the team. How about that? A, a, a game that actually saw Sam Houston State go on a 19-0 run. And uh, lo and behold, you guys came back, fought back, and won the game as uh, Shamise Robertson uh, had a good game for Sam Houston State. But Cassie Jones had 28 points for y'all. What a game. Yeah, career, career high. You know, shows a true test character, this team. They got down. It went down at halftime, it came back out of the second half, didn't let it bother them. They came back and showed what they're made of and got the win, which is real important. And Royce Chadwick, we brought him in three years ago, a program that was fledgling. He's done an awesome job. You know, he took SFA to the Sweet 16 15 years ago. We brought him in to try to get us there one day, and he's doing a great job so far. 
one of your players, Olivia Foudy, almost took me out right there at the end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw that. You got to be careful. Hey, how about the half court shot right there? That happened over at shoot around yesterday. What an opportunity for Paul Perez, a walk on. Great story for him, too. <laughs> it is. You know, two months ago, he wasn't on the team. And we saw him on campus. He actually was a walk on, a walk on tra practice partner with a women's team. Sure. The men's team liked him and said, hey, would you want to come try out with us? He's come on board and he's done a great job. It's, it, the the walk-ons are the, neat, the best story in college athletics. Um, for those of you that don't know, athletics basically started back up here in 1998. Kind of gives a little bit of the history and about the success of the program uh, through the years dating back to the 40s. Well, 1947, the university was formed on an island here on Corpus Christi Bay. It was called University of Corpus Christi, and we had athletics until 1971, and they were the Tarpons. We have a lot of Tarpons here today. They're very proud of this university. We're happy to have them. Uh, when the university changed some names in 71, they did away with athletics, but we brought it back in 1998 with some help of those former students. And last night we had our Hall of Honor banquet where we inducted one of those gentlemen, Gerald Hendricks. He played here in 56 to 60, and uh, really neat having them back on campus. They've been a big part of bringing back the athletics. And uh, for the last 15 years, we've done a lot. It's made a big difference in the university. It's been really exciting to have them. Uh, final thoughts. I mean, great recruiting area here, the Corpus Christi area, spring break right around the corner. Beautiful area. How can you beat it? <laughs> the only campus in the entire North America that's on its own island. We got our own beach. You know, you come down here. There you go. You got the USS Lexington here. It's a beautiful museum. Corpus Christi, which is, you know, the Emerald City by the bay. It's, it's just a great place to call home. It's a great place to go to school. It's a great place to live. It's a great place to visit. You've got North Padre Island just down the street. It's just a great place to live. I'm really excited and I'm happy to be here. Absolutely. Scott Lazeby, thank you so much thank for being you, with Jeff. us. Appreciate it. All right, keep up the good work. Scott Lazeby and uh, Texas A&M Corpus Christi leading right now 30 to 27 over Sam Houston State. We'll be right back with much more on the Christus Fund Health System Halftime Report in just a moment. And welcome back to the Chris Despond Health System Halftime Report. 30 to 27, the Islanders of Texas A&M Corpus Christi leading Sam Houston State. And you see it, the homecoming court here in Corpus Christi. Great to see these youngsters uh, getting a chance to be crowned homecoming queen and homecoming king. And always a great sight here. What a first half here so far for Texas A&M Corpus Christi. They are leading it 30 to 27. This would be a pretty big upset. We already know that they beat SFA earlier this year. Let's check in now with Tom Franklin and Neil Raphael with more from the first half, guys. All right, Jeff, thanks very much. A very cold shooting start to the first half for the Islanders from Texas A&M Corpus Christi, but they really picked up their shooting to finish the half at 9 of 24, and that's good for 37.5%, while Sam Houston State has been held to 31.8% on 7 of 22. Rebounds favor Sam Houston State by a 19 to 13 margin. And points off turnovers. Look at AM Corpus Christi as they have managed 19 points on forcing 12 turnovers in the first half. One of the big keys, Neil. Yeah, I think that's been the difference in this contest, especially in the last three or four minutes. They really stepped up the pressure defense, attacked the rim, got to the free throw line, and made things really happen for the Islanders. Halftime activities continue here from Corpus Christi with the Islanders on top by three after this timeout. Healthcare never sleeps. It's constantly changing. Hello. It's not a desk job. I'm on my feet all day. This is Trevor Three East. I'm Trevor Bonzer, and I'm a nurse manager at Christus Bond Shoreline. The faculty at a and Corpus Christi, you see the passion in their teaching. They will challenge you, and, and they will motivate you. They want you to succeed. Aimed at top Texas University for return on investment. Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Discover your island. Visit us for Island Day at islandday.tamucc.edu. No one knows your financial needs like you do. At Gulf Coast Federal Credit Union, we've got a loan for all your needs, from real estate loans, to recreational vehicle loans, to auto loans. We've got a loan for that, and with our extremely low auto loan rates and easy financing, you'll be driving off in your dream car sooner than you thought. So stop by Gulf Coast Federal Credit Union today, your local credit union, with loans for all your personal needs, and find out what it means to be a member of Gulf Coast Federal Credit Union. What if auto loans didn't require a long approval process? And what if you got one right at the dealership? Quicker Auto Loans from Navy Army Community Credit Union. Does your bank do that? 
What if it didn't matter whose ATM you used? And the ATM fees? Well, they just kind of made you laugh. Nationwide ATM fee refunds from Navy Army Community Credit Union. Does your bank do that? The season is winding down for Islanders basketball, and there are only two chances left to catch the teams at the American Bank Center. Thursday, March 5th, will be Educator Appreciation Night as the Islanders take on Houston Baptist with a doubleheader starting at 5. Then, on Saturday, March 7th, it's Senior Day with your hometown team facing Abilene Christian starting at 1 o'clock. Don't miss your last chance to see the Islanders this season. Call 361-825-BALL or visit GoIslanders.com to get your tickets today. 30-27, to 27, Texas A&M Corpus Christi with a three-point advantage over Sam Houston State here at the intermission at the American Bank Center. And it was a back-and-forth first half as Sam Houston State got out to an early six-point lead at 18-12 to 12 before the Islanders came rolling back. See a three-ball from the corner from Kahim Ransom, one of their two-way players. You see that early start. There's the follow basket underneath by Ransom. And then John Jordan got heated up for the Islanders as the half went on. No look pass there. Big basket by Curry coming off the wing. And Curry with a follow underneath. Missed it, Jordan missed the tip. Jordan picks up the loose ball and fights his way through three men for this incredible reverse layup. One of the plays of the first half. And here might be the highlight of the first half. Emmanuel Tony with a two-hand slam Undercut, but says, no, I'm all right. And it wound up being a six-point opportunity for Texas A&M Corpus Christi. They lead 30-27. to We'll come back with a second half from the American Bank Center right after this timeout. We get set for the second half here at the American Bank Center with Texas A&M Corpus Christi owning a three-point 30-27 to lead over the Sam Houston State Bearcats. It's time now for our second half adjustments brought to you by Shea Physical Therapy, proud partner of Islander Athletics. And Neil, first of all, if you're Texas A&M Corpus Christi, what do you change, although you lead by three? I don't think you change a whole lot. You have to continue to push the tempo. The aggressive defense by the Islanders right now, 12 turnovers has produced 19 points. Conversely, tech, uh, Sam Houston State trailing by three, a position they are not accustomed to being in here on this eight-game winning streak. What does what uh, Jason Hooten and company have to do differently? Offensively, they've got to take care of the basketball. Number of turnovers in at the end of the first half really wrecked havoc on them, and then they've got to keep John Jordan out of the paint. He's, he's detrimental to a team if you allow him to get in that paint and create. Jordan starts the second half with the ball as the Islanders have the basketball to get things started here in the second half. Islanders in the white home uniforms moving left to right. Tony will feed it down low and Thomas will travel. Lost his footing as he went to plant the foot and it slid right out from underneath him. And that caused the turnover and that'll be turnover number 10 for the Islanders. Yeah, a lot of that had to do with the large frame of Michael Holyfield. Did you a think? nice job of he had something to his do arms with that? and moving his feet. Yeah, just a little bit, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> little intimidation there. Here's Jabari Peters. His three is no good, but Gatlin there for the follow. Couldn't get it to go, and Dubier will pull it off. Oh, a golden opportunity for Gatlin and the Bearcats, and they couldn't capitalize. Gatlin almost got the steal from behind, hustling back on defense as he tried to poke it away from Jordan. Duvier got off to the quick start with seven of their first eight points, but then picked up a couple of fast fouls and spent much of the half on the bench. I like what they're doing, trying to get the ball to Duvier lower on the block. Sam Houston doing a nice job of forcing him away from the paint. Jordan with the clock running down to three. Tony will take the three ball and it's no good, and Ransom will pull off the rebound ahead for Baxter. Dribbled it off his foot, but recovered. Gatlin will leave for Holyfield. Muscles his way in, no good, and Thomas picks up the rebound. Holyfield cannot convert from close range, so we stay in a three-point game. Here's Thomas with a drive, and Holyfield swats it out of there. Ransom back the other way for the Bearcats. Got the contact from Jordan, couldn't get the follow, but Holyfield will tap it in. 
Holyfield's first field goal of the game. Makes it a one-point opportunity. And a nice offensive glass work that time by the Cats. And how about Holyfield with the block on the defensive end to set it up and running the floor and getting the tip-in follow. Here's Tony, had the ball knocked out of his hands from behind. They say last touch. Peters definitely poked it away, but they say Tony had the last hands on it. And that's what happens a lot of times when the bigs step in there and block it and they run the floor. They're rewarded at the other end. Sam Houston State with a chance to go back on top. And a moving screen. And if that's Holyfield, that's his third. It is. The and first team foul of the second half, but that's something to keep an eye on now with Holyfield with three fouls. He'll stay on the floor. And this second half is starting like the first half did. Both teams playing a little tight right now. Little conservative. Thomas Perduvier dribbled it off his foot but recovers down low. Offensive foul, and that'll be Duvier's third as the position on defense was established by DeMarcus Gatlin. It was. Gatlin slid his feet into the paint. When Duvier felt that contact, Tom, he should have pivoted toward the baseline. Armas Myauskas, who also has two fouls, will check in for Holyfield at the next opportunity for Sam Houston State. Three minutes gone by here, just two points in the second half. They belong to the Bearcats. Gatlin's drive tried to muscle it up, and we're going to get a jump ball. Great defense by the Islanders. The ball will stay, however, with the Bearcats on alternating possession. Nice job by Ray Sean Thomas of getting his arms extended and forcing that jump ball situation. Take a look at the drive right there, and there you see Thomas getting his hand right on top of the ball. They only have seven to shoot as the clock, the shot clock does not reset. Myauskas with the right hand jump hook uses a little kiss of the glass for two. And the Bearcats are back on top, 31 to 30. A nice isolation on the low block and the pivot toward the baseline. Steal by Peters. Back out to Gatlin, he'll drive the lane. Lefty is no good and Duvier will clear. Oh, and he took a shot. You can see his head snap back there underneath the basket. And Gatlin will pick up his third personal foul. Happens many times the retaliation foul on Gatlin. Gatlin did a nice job to get in the lane, but he shied away from the defense as opposed to going into the defender and getting to the free throw line. So the Islanders still look for their first points here in the second half. We played three minutes and 45 seconds. Brandon Pye, who has not been heard from on the score sheet so far. Jordan will back up toward midcourt and set the play in motion with 12 on the clock. Here's Curry who had four points off the bench. He'll go with the lefty off the glass that's short. Myauskas will clear. And away come the Bearcats. Three-pointer from Baxter is good. And Baxter is into double figures with 10 with his second three ball in the ball game. And the Bearcats lead by four, 34-30. Nice rotation, nice legs. Sometimes when you're given so much time to sit there and think about it, doesn't always happen. Thomas going to try and drive and get a holding foul on Myauskas, I believe. Myauskas will get the foul, and that'll be his third. So both big men for Sam Houston State, Myauskas and Holyfield, now with three fouls with 15-25 to play. And the Bearcats on top by four. Ticketmaster.com or Southland School Ticket Offices. I'm Christy Felice and I am the Director of Brand Engagement for the Houston Astros. 
Texas A&M University Corpus Christi has absolutely helped get me to where I am today. And it is a small campus with large opportunities. You should definitely choose Texas A&M University Corpus Christi. Named a top Texas university for return on investment. Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Discover your island. Visit us for Island Day at islandday.tamucc.edu. The home for Islanders Insider is right here on Root Sports Southwest. Join me, Stephen King, as I sit down with Islanders coaches, bring you behind the scenes with Islanders student athletes, and keep you up to date on all things Islanders. This week, see what men's basketball coach Willis Wilson and women's basketball coach Roy Shadwick have to say about their teams heading down the stretch. Every week, we'll be right here on Islanders Insider, Thursdays at 5 on Root Sports Southwest. Fifteen twenty-five to play here in the ball game. And Texas A&M Corpus Christi looking for their first points in the second half. They've been outscored seven to nothing. Have turned the ball over four times while shooting 0 for three here to get things started. Not exactly what Coach Willis Wilson and company drawn up in the locker room, was it, Neil? No, not at all. Got to slow it down. If the transition opportunities aren't there. Do what you did in the first half. Take care of it, run your offense, get quality looks. Curry with an airmail from 15 feet on the baseline. Here come the Bearcats on the run. Mayowskis to the basket will draw a foul. It'll be on Emmanuel Tony, his first. And the second team foul against the Islanders here in the second half. And Aramis Mayowskis at the free throw line. Mayowska's a 79% free throw shooter on the year. First one off the front iron, no good. And here comes Ehab Amin. He will come in for Emmanuel Tony. As Mayowska's gets ready for the second. This one also no good. Did we get a lane violation? We did. Amin was in the lane too early, so wipe out the miss by Myauskas and give him a do-over. That's one thing that makes a coach really cringe. Oh, when doesn't you, it? When you miss a free throw and you step in that lane a little bit too soon. He missed all three. Only gets credit for missing two. <laughs> but he missed all three, so it stays a 34-30 ball game. The Islanders again look for their first scoring opportunity of the second half. Curry will lob it down low for Thomas. Spins to the basket, reverse layup with the right hand is good. Rashawn Thomas with his first field goal of the ball game, coming with 14.50 to play in the contest, and it's a 34-32 Sam Houston State lead. A nice wrap around by Thomas, but no help side defense that time by the Cats. Baxter penetrates, kicks the ball back out. Peters, who's still looking for his first point of the night, feeds Myauskas, went through his legs, and here comes Amin back the other way for the Islanders. Trying to go strong against Peters, who cut him off at the baseline. Good defense by Peters there. They're not allowing Jordan to get into a rhythm here in the second half as of yet. Amin back out for Thomas. The Euro step, left-handed roll, no good. Got his own follow and got it to go. And Myauskas gets his fourth foul in the process. Uh, Thomas handling that ball like a point guard that time. Thomas is an interesting fellow. 14.4 points per ball game, 8.6 rebounds a contest. Second in the uh, conference play at 8.9 per game. But when the stat sheet comes in as he misses the free throw and doesn't convert the three-point opportunity, when the stat sheet comes in at the end of the game, the first thing he asks sports information director Matt Brady is, is did I get credit for all my rebounds? <laughs> he doesn't care how many points he scored. Did I get credit for all my rebounds? Selfless player. We're tied at 34 with 13.40 to play. Ransom's three is no good. Long rebound to Jordan. Two on two. Jordan to the basket. We'll go to the corner for 
Amin and back out to Pye, and the Islanders will reset the offense. Tried to work in transition, but give credit to Sam Houston State for getting back and not allowing. Jordan with a free throw line jumper is no good. Rattles out, but picked up by Thomas. His follow is no good, but he got fouled, and that might be four on Holyfield. My goodness, Thomas has been a beast on the boards tonight. Nope, it wasn't Holyfield. They call it on Baxter instead with the reach in, his second. There we see the miss, the anticipation by Thomas. Holyfield kept his arms back on the backside, but it was Baxter underneath going for the swipe that picked up the foul. And that's what coaches love to see. When everybody blocks out and the ball hits the floor, that's the ultimate situation for a block out. And Rashawn Thomas is now just two out of six for the free throw stripe. Missed another one, two out of seven. Leaving points at the line, and we're still tied at 34. Gatlin trying to drive. Cross court pass is stolen by Jordan, but he couldn't keep his possession and feet in bounds. But you know it's a heads up play by Jordan. If he would have thrown that ball back, there were two cats waiting. It would have been a layup on the other none end. Of, none of his teammates were sitting there, right? Jordan's going to get his first breather of the night here. And a nice round of applause from the fans here at the American Bank Center acknowledging his contributions. 21 on the shot clock as the Bearcats will operate. Baxter to pull the trigger. Outside for Henderson. And the Bearcats will swing into their offense outside the arc. Here's Henderson's three, it's no good. Rebound over the back, Holyfield with a follow with the right hand. Great Holyfield job. with that long reach. Great job by Holyfield of imposing his will on the defenders. Great offensive work. That's where being 6'11 and having those long <laughs> arms comes to advantage. You can snatch that rebound over the back of a player and not draw contact. So Thomas is going to try and take Holyfield to the basket. Lost the dribble, recovers the ball, tried to muscle it up. Holyfield blocked it, no foul called, and Gatlin comes away for the Bearcats. Cross-court pass into the corner. The three is good by Gatlin. That extends the Bearcat lead out to five at 39-34. to They are on a 12-4 run to start the second half. Eleven forty-five to play here, and the Islanders don't need to panic. Just run their offense. Swatted away from Kilgore. Ball goes out of bounds. Unable to be saved on the backside by Baxter, and it will stay with Texas A&M Corpus Christi when Clay returns. They'll have ten to shoot. They trail by five with eleven thirty-nine to play here in Corpus Christi. As Yogi Berra would say, it's deja vu all over again here in the second half for the Texas A&M Corpus Christi Islanders. They started the ball game in the first eight minutes at the under 12 minute timeout, shooting just two of 11. Here in the second half, for the first eight minutes plus, they are two of nine. So you take the first 16 minutes of the two halves combined, they are combined four of 20 shooting, and that explains why they have turned a three-point advantage at halftime into a five-point deficit. Yeah, that along with five turnovers compared to two for the Cats. Here's Amin with a three from the right wing. It's off the mark, but Thomas chases down the rebound. Gets around Holyfield, has his shot blocked. Loose ball is taken away by Curry and stays with the Islanders. Amin will drive this time with the right hand is fouled and hits the deck heavily underneath the basket. And the foul is going to be on Markel McKinney. And that'll be his third. And 
six team fouls now on Sam Houston State. So unlike the first half where it was the Islanders getting into foul trouble early team-wise, this time it's Sam Houston State who has committed six early fouls, and the Islanders will get a chance to make some points with the line from here on out. Well, that's the aggressive nature of the Islanders. Well, Holyfield's going to take a seat. Ransom comes back in. Now the biggest player on the court is McKinney. And he's only listed at 6'3". <laughs> so a very small lineup for Jason Hooten. Let's see if the Islanders can take advantage of this as they apply the 1-2-2 two, two zone trap. Probably going to utilize a, a five-out offense with five guards. Look to get to the rim. Baxter can't take the three from the wing. He'll have the dribble instead, pressured out top. Corner jumper is no good by Henderson. He's got his own follow. He missed it. They fight for the rebound, goes out of bounds. Last touch, they say, by the Islanders. It'll stay with Sam Houston State. Gatlin battling deep underneath. And Gatlin's got the inbounds pass as they'll reset the offense. Ten and a half to play. And the Bearcats with a three-point lead in the ball. Corner three rattles in and out, no good. Gatlin couldn't get the follow, and Jordan will take it away for the Islanders. Jordan draws contact by Baxter, and Baxter will pick up his third foul, and that'll be seven against Sam Houston State. So John Jordan will have a one-and-one -one opportunity here with 10-13 to play as Rashawn Thomas gets ready to check back in. Nice job of closing up the tunnel that time. There we see enforcing the Cats to shoot from the perimeter. Holyfield comes right back in as those two seem to shadow each other. If one goes to the bench, the other will go to the bench and get the breather. And here comes Bryce Duvier back in, and he will come in and get Joe Kilgore. Nope, they'll get Jelani Curry instead. So Jordan, who had 12 points in the first half, will look to get his first points here in the second half from the stripe. Front end of the one and one is good. He's got 13 to lead all scores. And Jordan can make this a one point game with a bonus. And he does. 14 for Jordan makes it 39 to 38. And again, the pressure defense. But so far, all it's made Sam Houston do is take a little time off the clock. It really hasn't hampered their ability to come up the floor. The Bryce Island. Duvier picking up a foul. It'll be his fourth. Islanders are forcing the issue. Seven team fouls now on Sam Houston State. And getting to the line, and you gotta, you got to make those free throws. It come back to bite you. Only three fouls committed by the Islanders here in the second half, but two of them have been by Duvier, who now is the first player with four and will have to take a seat. And that takes away a critical weapon from the Islanders because Duvier was off to the hard, hot start with seven of their first eight points. Again, we've had a little blood on the uniform that uh, Amin had to get taken care of, and that caused the momentary delay. And so Ehab Amin is back out on the floor for the Islanders as Sam Houston State inbounds as we hit the halfway mark. One-point game here in Corpus Christi. Baxter with a kick out. Can Ransom convert? No. Missed everything, but Holyfield's got the follow. And that's frustrating to work so hard on defense and give up a chippy like that. 41-38, three-point advantage for the Bearcats. Curry will finally get it to Jordan with 19 on the clock. 
He will work against Baxter. Well played on the pick and roll game. Jordan pulls up for the 18 footer over Baxter. Wow, what a shot. Willis Wilson exhorting his Islanders to try and make a stop on defense here with nine minutes to play as his Islanders trail by one. Corner three is offline, no good by Gatlin, and here comes Jordan and the Islanders with a chance to go back on top. Jordan drives, he's cut off by Ransom, will pick up his third foul, and Jordan will go back to the line for a one and one. Jordan continuing to force the issue. The last time out was real patient offensively, backed up, hit the jumper, that time he attacked hard. And they continue to get to the line to the Islanders. You know, he's a little guy, but he had one of the highlight plays of the year earlier this season as he misses the front end of the one and one. And he's got a running vertical leap of 50 inches. <laughs> 50 inches for a guy who is 5'10". So dunking the basketball is not a hard thing for him to do. But he missed from the free throw line, so Sam Houston State maintains their one-point lead. And Jordan's got the steal. Against Baxter with help, lobs it up, and the finish by Kilgore. And the Islanders with an emphatic lead at 42-41. All that is is hustle and running the floor. And the unselfish nature of Jordan not trying to take it himself, seeing his teammate run, tapped away by Kilgore, but kept alive by Ransom for the Bearcats. Shot clock is down to 10 for the Bearcats as Baxter tries to drive almost a steal by Amin. Now it's down to five. Ransom's got to do something with it. He'll take a desperation three. It's off the line. Holyfield over the back for the rebound. Was that a foul? It was on Holyfield, and that'll be his fourth. And bring us to an official's timeout. The steal and the lob by John Jordan finished off by Joe Kilgore. Gives the Islanders the lead back at 42 to 41 with 7.35 to play here in Corpus Christi. Tom Franklin and Neil Raphael back here at the American Bank Center in Corpus Christi where we got a dandy brewing here in the Southland Conference. 42-41, Texas A&M Corpus Christi with a one-point advantage over Sam Houston State, which is riding an eight-game winning streak. And Jelani Curry to shoot one and one, knocks home the first and he'll get the bonus. Curry on the season, the 6'4 junior from Albany, New York. 67% from the free throw stripe. And make it a three-point lead and does. Sweet stroke on both of those free throws. Ups the ante to 44 to 41 with seven and a half to play here. Pressure in the backcourt against Ransom. He gets it over the line to Baxter. Tough drive by Ransom, left it short. Myauskas is following. We get a foul over the back on Thomas. Boy, that was close to being a clean Brock, but instead, Thomas will get his third personal foul. So Myauskas, who averages 8.2 off the bench, held us its two points tonight so far. Makes his first free throw in three attempts. To make it a 44 to 42 game with 7.08 to play. Islanders pretty stingy in the paint here in the second half. Myauskas will make them both. 
And it's a one-point game again. 44-43 as we approach seven minutes to play. Jordan against Baxter now and Ransom. Amin, we get a foul. We're we gonna get, what do we got here? 25, we get a double foul. So Myauskas, and if that's, if they call a double foul on Thomas and Myauskas battling for position underneath, and that is Myauskas' fifth foul. <laughs> It's and it's brewing. also the fourth against Thomas. You'll see this. It's been brewing for a while. You can see it there as they fight for position. And finally, referee Travis Motal said, I've had enough of this. <laughs> they continue you're to both to blame, so you're both getting a foul. <laughs> they continue to battle and then release and then repost again. So Duvier comes back in the ball game for the Islanders, who have it with 10 to shoot and a one point lead. Jordan against Baxter at the free throw line. Fades away from 10, left it short. Battle for the loose ball underneath, taken away and put back up by Curry, he missed it, but Duvier will finally get it to go. Duvier's first point since early in the ball game extends the Islander lead to Gatlin will leave it on the outside for Ransom. They try to go back door for Peters. Back outside for the three ball by Baxter. Rims around and in. And Baxter will tie it at 46 with six minutes to play. Nice ball movement that time by the Cats. They went inside and then they kicked it out. Third three-pointer of the ball game for Baxter who has 13 points to lead the Bearcats. 5.45 to go now. Every possession becomes golden for each team. Amin plays pick and roll with Duvier. Puts up the lefty that's short. Rebound tipped away by Amin. He recovers. Lost it on the baseline, and Peters could not keep it in. Had a foot on the baseline as he tried to go for the capture on the far side of the loose ball. And we'll see if free throws come into play here. Ten team fouls on the Cats. Only five on the Islanders. Amin inbounds. Swatted away by Peters. Great play by Peters on defense. And here come the Bearcats, driving the baseline, missing the one-hand dunk with Williams. Oh my goodness. Jordan lost the dribble, picks it back up again. They were looking for the emphatic lead from Jamal Williams and he missed the right-handed slam, hit the back of the iron and out it came. Jordan's got it with 10 on the clock. Down low for Duvier. His right-hander is no good, but a lot of contact, and he'll go to the free throw line as Williams will pick up the foul. Duvier will make his second trip to the free throw line, hit a pair in the first half, and rims this one out. He can become the second Islander in double figures if he can knock home the second one. As Kilgore will have a seat. And Brandon Pye comes back in for Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Duvier, one out of two from the line and a one point lead for the Islanders here with 4.45 to play. And Jason Hooten will call the timeout with 4.44 to go and we'll keep it right here. And Neil, this has really been a defensive intensive second half. The Islanders with 17 points. The Bearcats have come up with 19 points, but possessions and conversions on the offense have been hard to come by for both teams. They really have, and, and that's due to the aggressive nature on defense. Both teams are doing a good job. Both teams are coming out and trying to work the ball. And I feel right now that the Islanders have a slight advantage. They're able to get the ball in the paint, 
there's a foul situation, a foul differential that's going to put the Islanders at the free throw line a little more often than Sam Houston. So they've got to do a better job, Sam Houston, of taking care of the ball. And offensively, they're going to have to get some better looks. You know, very interesting in the first half, Willis Wilson, the Islander coaching staff, not at all pleased with the way the game was being called as his team committed the fouls that put Sam Houston in a double bonus early. Here it's been just the reverse here in the second half, so maybe all that constant uh, reminding of the officials <laughs> has paid off for the Islanders here in the second half. So we look at the second half stats. Only five of 17 shooting for Texas A&M Corpus Christi here in the second half. Not much better for Sam Houston State at seven of 22. Rebounds have evened up a little bit. Still in favor of Sam Houston State at 34 to 29, and each team with 15 turnovers in the ball game. But the big factor there is is that the Islanders have been able to convert those 15 turnovers into 23 points, while the Bearcats have only got nine points off of those turnovers. And when you get an opportunity like that to go and transition the other way and fail to cash in, oftentimes that's going to come up and sting you in the backside. And with 4.44 to go, that's exactly what Jason Hooten and his staff are looking at right now, saying we've gotten the opportunities, we haven't finished the deal. That along with free throws for the uh, for the Islanders here. We'll, we'll see what happens. We'll see if this becomes a free throw shooting contest in the last four and a half minutes. Well, the Islanders have gone to the line 26 times and have made 17. And that is a 65% percentage. Meanwhile, 12 of 18 for Sam Houston State at 66.7%, making two out of three there. So the players come on the floor. We have 444 left. A one-point lead for the Islanders, but the Bearcats will have the ball with a chance to reclaim the advantage here with 30 to shoot. So for Texas A&M Corpus Christi, they will have Curry, Duvier, Amin, Jordan. And who have I missed out on the floor? Pye is the man who is hiding in the corner. Meanwhile, for the Bearcats, they go down low for Gatlin's left-hander. No good and fouled from behind. It's going to be on Curry. Be his third, the team's sixth. And Demarcus Gatlin will be at the line to shoot a pair. A little high-low action that time by Sam Houston. Interesting that they try and post up a guy who is just six feet four inches tall. Depends. Gatlin's free throw is no good. Depends who's guarding him is the situation. Sometimes you'll post up a big guard on a shorter guard. You'll set a screen and then you'll flow down to the low block and see if they have an isolation. And that's what they did. Amin comes out. Thomas comes in for the Islanders. Holyfield right back with, in with him as those two guys have, have shadowed each other the entire game, whether it's on the bench or on the floor. They've been out there together and both have four fouls. Gadlin makes the second. And we're tied at 47 with four and a half to play. Which team is most efficient offensively? They're going to win this ball game. Duvier from three. Got it! For Duvier, his second three ball of the game. He's got 13 points, and the Islanders back on top by three. Nice to have a big guy that can step out there and nail that. Jabari Peters has been held scoreless in this ball game, and that is a great defensive effort by Texas A&M Corpus Christi. And Gatlin driving again will draw the foul from Pye. It'll be Brandon Pye's first, the seventh team foul, and bring us to an official's timeout with under four minutes to go. 3.49 to be exact, and the Islanders with the same lead they had at the intermission. Three. Don't you go away. We got a great finish for you here from the American Bank Center. Countdown to Katy, March 11th through 15th at the Merrill Center. Go to Ticketmaster.com or Southland School Ticket Offices. 
Christy Felice, and I am the Director of Brand Engagement for the Houston Astros. Texas A&M University Corpus Christi has absolutely helped get me to where I am today, and it is a small campus with large opportunities. You should definitely choose Texas A&M University Corpus Christi. Named a top Texas university for return on investment. Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Discover your island. Visit us for Island Day at islandday.tamucc.edu. The home for Islanders Insider is right here on Roots Sports Southwest. Join me, Stephen King, as I sit down with Islanders coaches, bring you behind the scenes with Islanders student athletes, and keep you up to date on all things Islanders. This week, see what men's basketball coach Willis Wilson and women's basketball coach Royce Chadwick have to say about their teams heading down the stretch. Every week, we'll be right here on Islanders Insider, Thursdays at 5 on Roots Sports Southwest. minutes 49 seconds to play Texas A&M Corpus Christi with a three-point advantage at 50 to 47 but it will be free throws for DeMarcus Gatlin for Sam Houston State as play returns here at the American Bank Center you know with only 50 points scored by the Islanders that's not unusual for Sam Houston State as they hold their opponents to 58.3 on the season but it's an outstanding defensive effort on the other hand for the Islanders who, whose opposition scores 65 and a half points per game to hold the Bearcats under 50 at this juncture. Gatlin with both free throws gets into double figures with 10 points. And it's a one point lead for the Islanders who have the ball. Ransom with three fouls playing Jordan head up all 94 feet. Curry looking to attack. Got to the block and will take it back outside. Curry realized there was nothing there. Brought the ball back out. Worked the clock a little bit. High with a high arching three. Bullseye from the corner. What a time for your first points of the ball game. Brandon Pye makes it a 53 to 49 game for the Islanders with 3.09 to go. Right back at you, Jabari Peters with his first points of the game. Counters with a three for the Bearcats. Wow. And Jason Hooten will call a timeout here with 3.06 to play and his team back to within one. Boy, just when you thought the Islanders might be getting the momentum with back-to-back -back threes from Duvier and followed up by Pye. The answer comes from Jabari Peters, and what a time for his first basket of the ball game. Oh, it's huge. Both teams being very methodical offensively, being very patient. There's the kick out, and there's the shot from beyond the arc. The rainbow by Pye. Now you see come back, play come back the other way, and Jabari Peters answering for Sam Houston State. Both the Islanders teams. are in the double bonus. The Bearcats in the single bonus here for the final 306. Yeah, both teams realize the impact this contest is going to have on the upcoming conference tournament and the conference championship. Sam Houston State with a chance if they could win this ball game and at Central Arkansas Monday and Lamar Thursday could set up a showdown for the outright title with Stephen F. Austin. Meanwhile, Texas A&M Corpus Christi if they can win, they can say, you know, the two top teams at the top of the, at the top of the standings, we got to, we've beaten you both, so we're not afraid of you in the tournament. Thomas going to the basket, got fouled, and that might be it for Holyfield. It is. So Holyfield will foul out of the ball game with 2.59 to go, and he leaves with eight points. Heads up play that time by Thomas of forcing the action. He did have 10 rebounds in the ball game. But that'll be a big loss. And now both of the biggest players for Sam Houston State have fouled out. Myowskis fouled out earlier on the double foul call. And now Holyfield leaves the ball game with 2.59 to go. Thomas rattles the first one out. It stays a one-point game, and he's missed his last four free throws. Heads up play by Thomas taking it right to the, the bread basket. But you've got to convert on these. 
Second one is good. He has seven points. Tony will come in for Thomas. So both teams playing small. Duvier, the biggest man on the floor for either team at 6'7". And a very small lineup for Jason Newton and the Bearcats. Driving to the basket goes Ransom. Took a heavy spill. But the foul is going to be on Ransom. It's an offensive foul, a charge. His fourth. get a look at this again it's Tony. Tony look at Tony step over there establish his position he did he stepped over there from the weak side got his feet set and took the hit yeah that's a couple of hard spills he's taken you know, he had that big dunk in the first half where he took a heavy spill and drawn the charge there and they say basketball is not a contact <laughs> sport <laughs> <laughs> He's the epitome of a role player. Here's Thomas again, trying to work his way in at Goodwin. Left it short, but a foul. It's going to be on Goodwin. And Thomas doing a nice job of imposing his will on the Sam Houston Bearcats. Now Willis Wilson, I think, is going to play a little offense for defense with Thomas because Sam Houston does not have any of the big men in. Every chance he gets on offense, he's going to put him in, but every chance he gets to take him away from the defensive end, sure. he's going to do that as Amin is here to check in. Yeah, they're going to continue to pound that ball inside and force the issue and get to the line. Eight points now for Thomas as he makes the front end. 55-52 with 2.26 left. Goodwin will check out, and Jamal Williams will come in for Sam Houston State. Yeah, with Holyfield out, a huge advantage for the Islanders inside. Free throw by Thomas. No good, but Duvier's got the rebound. And a new 35 for the Islanders. They trap him in the corner, and he alertly calls timeout. What a heads-up play by Bryce Duvier. Wow. Done a lot of great things here in the second half. Stepped out, made a three-pointer for the 6'7 player. Heads-up play there. There was nothing there. Kicked the ball out. Fought hard for that defense. Checked that offensive board. So the Islanders with a chance to make this a two-possession game if they can get points here with 2.22 remaining. They lead right now by three. So let's go in the mind of head coach Willis Wilson. What are you going to try and draw up here for this Islander team on this possession, Neil? I think you continue to pound the ball into Thomas. They haven't stopped him yet. He's either made it or he's gotten to the free throw line. That young man's going to have to step to that line and make those free throws. Continue to pound it in. If he's doubled, then you kick it out, and you either get a three-point shot or you penetrate to the basket. If you don't have it, use the clock. Clock is your ally with 2.22 to go here. So we'll see how good Coach Raphael is at predicting Coach Wilson <laughs> in his offensive attack here when the teams return to the floor here. Thanks. No pressure here. No, not at all. <laughs> well, you think I brought you along here for nothing? Come on. <laughs> 2.22 left. And the Islanders will have to inbound from deep in the corner next to their players bench. Jelani Curry will pull the trigger and he'll have to remain stationary. They look for Duvier, can't find him, finally get it inbounds. They find Jordan, he'll take it outside the arc and set things up. Paul Baxter plays him head up. Try and play pick and roll. Oh, offensive foul on Thomas. They say he moved his feet at the last minute, and he'll fall out of the game. Wow. Willis Wilson going over to our lead official, Kelly Hunt, saying, are you sure that's what you saw right there? And Thomas trying to plead his case, and he's not going to win this one. Let's take a look again. Let's see if he stays stationary, moves at the last minute. And he took that step out with him. Yeah. He didn't hold, he established position, then stepped out. And that drew the foul. If he had keep, kept his feet together, he might have gotten away with that. But when he stepped out with the right leg, that was it. 
Gatlin drives the lane and draws the foul. And boy, hasn't he been aggressive here in the second half, going to the basket time in and time out, Neil. Yeah, and the fact that Thomas is gone, they send him right up the gut. Thomas is no longer in the middle of that defense. So Gatlin with 10 points in the ball game, six of those here in the second half, will shoot two more. It's five out of six from the stripe. Be interesting to see what the Islanders do offensively. If they bring Bouvier now down to the low block right. and force the issue there. Tony will check out as Pi comes in. Gatlin to make it a one point game does. 55 54. We're under two minutes to play. Pressure defense on the inbounds by the Bearcats forces Duvier to use another timeout. So now each team will have two timeouts remaining with 1.56 to play in a one point game. And now you have to decide do you want a big inside or do you want another ball handler out there, especially with the full court pressure? And what will be interesting now is, is after the made free throw, you could run the baseline to try and get the ball in bounds. But by calling timeout, you put yourself in a stationary position. You have. It'll be interesting to see how Jason Hooten will play this defensively. A lot of coaches will guard the ball on the inbounds if the man can run the, the baseline. Correct. When he can't run the baseline and he's stationary, they'll try and play four on five from the defensive standpoint with the men on the floor. So Duvier is going to inbound again. Nope, Curry's going to do it instead. Duvier is going to come out. Yeah, I think that's a smart play. And Williams will shadow him and now back away. They get it inbounds quickly to Amin. Yeah, you send your big all the way down the floor. And Amin will drive all the way to the basket with the left hand. Ehab Amin with a huge basket, makes it a three-point game again, 57 to 54 with a minute 40 left. Peters, who made the big three a moment ago, shadowing Baxter, he'll try and take him to the basket with the right hand and got it. Paul Baxter with 15 points. Got the ball, got away. They get it in quickly to Jordan. And Jordan races up the sideline and gets into front court. In front of the scorer's table. One minute, five seconds and counting. 20 to shoot for the Islanders with a precarious one point lead. You want to run the clock, but you want to make sure you get a quality look. And Jordan's going to control it. Reach in foul on Gatlin on the floor. For Gatlin, his fourth. Double bonus time for John Jordan. That's the advantage of having Jordan. Saw the clock go down to 10. He has the ability to create, get in the lane, and draw the foul. Six of nine from the line tonight as part of his 16 points. Has the first. Jordan with 17. We're down to 51.8 seconds to go. Jordan can give the Islanders a three-point advantage, and does. Still a one-possession game. And Jason Hooten will call timeout for the Bearcats with 47 seconds to go, and his team down by three. So now let's take you inside the Bearcat huddle. We, went, we were in the Islanders huddle a moment ago. Let's see how you do now in the Bearcats huddle. You have no big man on the floor. It's both Bioskis and Holyfield to foul on the ball game. You're basically playing with five guards. Goodwin's on the floor. He's 6'7", is your biggest man. But guard play is your key. How are you going to try and set these guys up? I think you're going to continue to try to get to the paint on these guys. You know, you're down three, but 47 seconds is a long time. If you have a three, you'll take it, but that's not your first priority. Your pr first priority is trying to break the Islanders down on the dribble and get to the rim. They've done a nice job tonight of getting there from the wing. They haven't done as good a job from the top. Hey. 
talked to Jason Hooten at their shoot around today, and I asked him, I said, if it comes down to a game where you need a basket to tie, a basket to win, where do you go? He said, well, it usually depends on the flow of the game as to who's got it. The guy I have the most faith in is Jabari Peters, who's only got one basket tonight. The two hot hands here in the second half are Baxter and Gatlin. Let's see if one of those guys winds up with the ball. Ransom's pass knocked out of bounds by Jordan. Got the hands of the passing lane. Don't forget you have Ransom. Has the ability to take the ball to the rim as well. They lob it out. Peters with a three from the top. Off the mark, no good. Fight for the rebound. We're going to get a foul on the floor. And where is it going to be? It's going to be on Duvier, and that'll be his fifth. So both teams now in a similar position for the final 33.3. Neither team's big men are available. They have both fouled out for each team. Holyfield and Myauskas and Duvier and Thomas. See who the biggest man on the floor is now. <laughs> <laughs> All the bigs. Well, the guy who's shooting. <laughs> Yes, that's Jamal what I was Williams, thinking. He's 6'4", and he's yes. got a long wingspan. <laughs> he might be the biggest guy for the Bearcats. <laughs> no good on the first of two for Williams. His first miss in three tries in the ball game. The lead stays at three for Corpus Christi. Williams knocks home the second one. It's a two point game, 59-57. Full court pressure, they get it into Jordan. Ahead for Kilgore, to the basket. No good, no contact, no call. Peters with the rebound, and back comes Sam Houston with 24 seconds to go. Three ball to take the lead, short. Jordan's got the rebound, and he'll be fouled on the floor. Yeah, you can get that shot anytime. You can get it with two seconds, or you can get it with 19-7 on the clock. I just thought that shot was rushed. It was a little too early. Should have worked a little harder for a quality look. The Islanders were screaming for a foul on the other end on the drive to the basket, didn't get it. And the Bearcats, they only needed a basket to tie. The three would have put them in front. And they come up empty on the three from the corner. Jordan with important free throws misses the front end. That's huge. You know, if he would have made both, it would have been a two possession game. Correct, correct. So now he keeps the Bearcats alive with 18.7 to go. Very big free throw here. Got the second one to roll in. Jordan now at 19, 60 to 57. Bearcats, will they play it out? No, Jason Newton calls timeout. And is that his last one? I think it is. Scoreboard right now showing one, but are they gonna take it off? Will that be his last timeout? 14 seconds on the nose remaining. Yes, that's his final timeout. I think if you're Sam Houston, you've gotta look for Baxter. He's, he's had the hot hand. He's got a couple points. of threes here exactly. in the second half. 50-50 from that. You know, or else you're, you're looking to draw the old-fashioned three-point play with Gatlin, who's had a great deal of success going to the basket and shooting at the line tonight. So I would say that's the way you're going to go. You're going to play for the old-fashioned three or the new three, if you will, from <laughs> outside the arc. Let's take a look. You know, we'll have our three-point shot of the game coming up here. And uh, the three-point shot of the game. And our assist of the game coming up. I think we found the assist of the ball game. That was earlier on as John Jordan with the lob pass to Kilgore and tonight's big sub. Bench players have not played a big role in this ball game, so some of the game's gonna be a little harder for us to decide here because most of the damage has been done by the starting fives of both teams. 
But right now, we've got a one possession game, 14 seconds to go. Sam Houston State trails, and they have the ball in front court. Peters will put it in motion. You're going to have to screen for the shooter. Ransom can't waste a lot of time outside. Great defense on the perimeter. Here's the drive and the slam by Gatlin with 2.7 seconds to go. It's a one-point game, and they foul before the ball ever gets in. Nope, Islanders called timeout first. No. Boy, what a slam by Gatlin. Oh, my goodness. And if you're the Islanders right there, you got to get the basketball in, probably run the clock out or get it to 1.5 or so. They allowed All you a gotta timeout do is to be called. Throw the long pass exactly. in the front court. Let your man chase it yes. down. Or even if you don't chase it down, by the time they do, there's very little time for Sam Houston State to come back the other way. Wow. Because they're going to foul immediately if they don't get the steal. Well, the Islanders are 2.7 seconds away. All right, let's take a look at our assist of the ball game. And there is John Jordan lobbing it up for Joe Kilgore and slamming it home. The Domino's delivery of the game. Order online at dominoes.com. I don't think there's any question that's your assist of the game right there. Must get the ball inbounds if you're Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Due to Amin, he's fouled immediately by Peters. And so Ehab Amin, freshman out of Alexandria, Egypt. Let's take a look at our long distance delivery of the ball game. Our three point shot of the game. And there is Brandon Pye, the second of back-to-back -back threes that extended the Islanders' lead. Is your sprint. Dial it up from long distance. Three-point shot of the day. Switch and save today at sprint.com. Amin misses the front end of the two-shot free throw. Well, if you're Sam Houston State, that's just what you wanted because if you can get in and launch the three, you can win the game now. Amin's got to make this second one. 2.2 2 seconds to go. He does. 61 59. The long pass down. Launched at the buzzer. No good by Williams, and the Islanders have done it. They have beaten Stephen F. Austin and Sam Houston State here at the American Bank Center. Final score tonight by a score of 61 to 59. Our post-game activities will follow this timeout. Tom Franklin, Neil Raphael back with you from the American Bank Center in Corpus Christi, Texas, where the Texas A&M Corpus Christi Islanders have upset the Sam Houston State Bearcats 61-59, stopping the Bearcat winning streak at eight games in tonight's contest. And it's time now for our Adidas player of the game. And you'll see him right there, number 10. John Jordan, who led all scorers with 19 points, eight rebounds, and six assists. Fabulous one there. And there's a big jump shot from Jordan as part of his 19-point arsenal. And right now, Jeff Power is standing by with our Adidas player of the game. Oh, my God. John Jordan joining us right now. And what a game, 19 points for you. And hey, you're one of only a couple seniors on this team. And you knew how important this game was. No doubt, uh, it was a big game for the team and for the university. It's homecoming weekend, so why not get the win? Hey, you're at a Hightower High School in Houston. Tell me about that alley-oop. You were just telling me that I'm glad he caught it because I underthrew it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we had, we had this little competition um, going on with our team who, who can get the most dunks. And it's good to be able to see a freshman, Joe Kilgore, um, get on the board with his first dunk. Hey, you've become kind of the face of Islander basketball, uh, points leader in career as far as uh, here at Texas A&M Corpus Christi, also assists and rebounds. Give me your thoughts, though, about where this program is. You just beat SFA. You just beat Sam Houston State. Damn, uh, those are the two top teams in this conference. I mean, it's crazy to think about it because after I, after I leave, I think the team will still be good. I mean, 
it's obvious the growth um, that um, that we're progressing. Um, university is progressing. Is as um, right, man, I don't even know what to say. <laughs> I mean, we just keep getting better and better um, every day, no and it starts at, at practice. Yeah. And there's still an outside yeah. chance you guys they could get the, the top seed. Thoughts about that as you head towards Katy, because that's two buys. <laughs> right? Yeah, no doubt. Um, we just trying to take it one day at a time and one game at a time. You know, we can't, you know, we can't win two in a row unless we win one. And so it's just a process. John Jordan, thank you so much. Thank Go enjoy it with your team. Thank you, thank you. All right, let's send it back to you, Tom. Can I find right, John Jordan, our Adidas player of the game. Adidas, where you're all in, leading Texas A&M Corpus Christi to the 61-59 to victory tonight here at the American Bank Center. And, Neil, as you look at this, this could be a springboard for Texas A&M Corpus Christi. They have two more home games coming up on Thursday night against HBU. They finish with Abilene Christian could have some momentum and could be that one team you do not want to face in the tournament when he gets to Katy. Yeah, you definitely don't want to face them right now. They've beaten two first place teams. They've beaten Stephen F at home and then tonight they've beaten Sam Houston State. And I think the difference in this contest 36 times to the free throw line tonight. May only made 23. It's not too bad, but the second half was the big difference. They got to the line, they made the shots when they needed them. On the other hand, Sam Houston State riding a wave of momentum, 17 of 18, an 18 game winning streak. If you're Jason Hooten, you really can't be too disappointed. Your team left it all out on the line here. Winning on the road is tough in any conference, especially here in Corpus Christi, where the Islanders always play well. Yeah, exactly. You've got to play this season out, get to the tournament. Hopefully you'll get one of the two top buys, first or second place, and then you move on and you go to KD and you do the best you can. It's still ahead for them. They have three games coming up this week, playing Monday, and Thursday before the big showdown, the rematch with Stephen F. Austin and Nagadoches on the final day of the season next Saturday night up in Nagadoches. The winner of that game probably is going to be your number one seed overall and your regular season champion. Yeah, it should be great. Last two weeks of the season leading up to the KD tournament. Southland Conference is one of these growing conferences come from under the radar, but we've seen in the past the Missouri Valley, the Horizon Conference, your, your teams like Butler, and even the West Coast Conference, Gonzaga, talking to both of these coaches. They see a big future for this conference, and this could be the sleeper conference people need to keep an eye on, not only this year, but in years to come when you come to NCAA tournament time. I agree, this basketball is good as any basketball in the country. Well, we had a great one tonight here at the American Bank Center where Texas A&M Corpus Christi comes away with a 61 to 59 victory over Sam Houston State breaking the Bearcats eight game winning streak. So for Jeff Power and Neil Raphael, Tom Franklin for our entire crew here in Corpus Christi saying so long, we'll see you next time. Down to Katy, March 11th through 15th at the Merrill Center. Go to Ticketmaster.com or Southland School Ticket Offices.